this lesson we study electrostatic force. Electrostatic force can be an attraction or a repulsion. So we need to understand when are objects pulled together, when are they pushed apart electrostatically. You can investigate this yourself very easily, for example by taking two balloons. If you rub both the balloons against the same kind of cloth, Maybe you have a woolen jersey and you rub both of them against that woolen jersey. And then you hold them on their string so that they're free to move and you look at how they interact with one another. Then you will be able to see how like charges interact. Do they attract or do they repel one another? How do we know that these would be like charged? Because we've treated them the same way, we rub them both against the same kind of material and so they must end up with the same charge. Maybe they might both end up with a positive charge, perhaps if they hold their electrons more tightly than the jersey does. And if you do this you'll see that they will move apart from one another, it'll be like they'll run away from one another and you can chase one with the other. And that's because positive objects repel other positive objects. Now you don't know, perhaps when you rub them both with the same material, they both ended up negatively charged. You can't know that just by rubbing them. You'd have to know some other information to know whether it was positive or negative. But you just know that they both got the same charge as one another because you treated them the same. So perhaps this material that you rub them with holds its electrons looser than the balloon. Then the balloons will both end up negatively charged. Two negatively charged balloons will also repel one another. Negative and negative are the same as one another. We can say they are like charges. Positive and positive are also like charges. And like charges repel one another. Now let's say instead you were to rub one balloon with one kind of cloth and another balloon with something else then there is the possibility that you could charge the two balloons differently to one another. One positively, the other negatively. That won't necessarily happen, but it might. If you get that right, you will find that the balloons now attract one another. And that's because opposite charges attract. Positive and negative attract one another. Now actually, all positive objects have both positive and negative particles in it, and the same with all negative objects. So all kinds of objects will attract one another, because there will be particles inside them that will attract one another. So that plus will attract that minus, that plus will attract that minus, for example, and that plus will attract that minus, and all the others not shown as well. I haven't shown all the possibilities of attraction. But the point is that any two objects do have oppositely charged particles inside them which attract one another. Similarly, any two objects also have like charges which will repel one another. That positive will repel that positive. That negative will repel that negative. And so on. And I haven't shown all the possibilities, of course. But what determines whether the object overall attracts? or repel is the relative strength of the attraction and repulsion. So when there are oppositely charged objects, they attract one another more than they repel one another. When there are like charged objects, they repel one another more than they attract one another. And so the overall effect is attraction for the positive and negative objects, the oppositely charged objects, and repulsion for the like charged objects. 